this meeting to order. This is City of Palm Coast City Council. It is Tuesday, June 20th, 2017. It is 9 a.m. Please join me in the pledge to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Mayor Hall. Here. 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 Council Member Clifus. Council Member Shipley. Here. Mayor, all members are present. Thank you. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the City Council's June 6, 2017 City Council business and June 13, 2017 City Council workshop. Move approval. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, it passes unanimously. We'll now move to agenda item number two, which is our proclamations. Proclamation recognizing June 18, 2017 through June 25, 2017 is Amateur Radio Week. Council Member Cuff will be presenting. I uh, ask everyone that's going to receive this proclamation to come up to the podium. Whereas amateur radio has historically played a significant role and the sharing of ideas, and whereas Palm Coast, Florida has a great many radio amateurs who continuously demonstrate their value in public assistance, and whereas the radio amateurs of the city of Palm Coast and of Flagler County are on the alert for tornadoes, floods, hurricane, wildfires, and other local emergencies and utilize their communication skills to assist city, county, and state officials. And whereas the radio amateurs of the city of Palm Coast and of Flagler County have generously and repeatedly donated their considerable energy, effort, time, and equipment to provide communication support to local service clubs and organizations at no charge, and whereas the radio amateurs of the City of Palm Coast and of Flagler County offer free technical training to all interested citizens, and whereas the City of Palm Coast recognizes and appreciates the diligence of these hams who also serve as weather spotters in the Skywarn program of NOAA's National Weather Service, part of the U.S. Department of Commerce, and whereas the amateur, uh, amateur radio once again proved its undisputed relevance in the modern world by providing emergency communications when other systems failed in the devastation of Hurricanes Katrina and Rita in the USA and in the tsunami catastrophe overseas, and whereas the radio amateurs of the city of Palm Coast and of Flagler County continue to hone their communication skills by operating the 24-hour simulated emergency known as American Radio Relay League Field Day on June 24th and 25th, 2017. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Palm Coast Mayor and City Council do hereby designate June 18th through June 25th, 2017 as Amateur Radio Week in recognition of this important emergency preparedness exercise, we call on all citizens to pay tribute to all the amateur radio operators of our county. Signed this 20th day of June, 2017, Melissa Holland, Mayor, City of Palm Coast. I guess I, guess I get it. <laughs> Well, I, want to, I want to thank you all, and many of you have seen us not just doing or hearing us on the weather. Most of you, if you haven't, you will see us in the holiday parade, since we do all the staging, and I've been the parade starter for almost 10 years now, and that's just us uh, working on our radio skills back and forth, working with the fire department, and uh, amateur radio is there if all else fails, 
And I'm, I'm not sure how many are also aware that we can have a amateur radio operator on any piece of emergency equipment at any time, 24 seven, if the systems do, do go down and we have trained in the city of Palm Coast to do that. Uh, I am uh, KJ4VKF. I am KK4ZER. Uh, my ham call sign is KI4CKF and my better half here got her license so that she could work on the parade lineup. <laughs> KI4GTV. KG4HUF. Wow. Well, thank you for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a few, so one, two, three, one, two, three, one more, one, two, three. Thank you. Agenda item number three is a proclamation recognizing the 100th anniversary of the Flagler County Sheriff's Office. Welcome Sheriff Staley and Council Member Klufus will be presenting. Sure. Where is that? Mayor, Council. <clears throat> Whereas, after Florida gained statehood on March 3rd, 1845, the first legislature ruled county sheriffs should be elected. And whereas, Flagler County was formed by the Florida Legislature on April 28, 1917, from parts of St. John's and Volusia Counties. And whereas, the first sheriff of Flagler County was Ernest Walton E.W. Johnston, who was appointed by Florida Governor Sidney Katz and whose tenure began July 9, 1917. And whereas, Flagler County has had 18 sheriffs, including two who served non-consecutive terms, totaling 16 different men who served as the Flagler County Sheriff. And whereas, one sheriff and four deputies have died in the line of duty while serving Flagler County between 1927 and 2017. And whereas, Sheriff Rick Staley began serving January 3, 2017 as the current and 18th Flagler County Sheriff. And now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the mayor and the city council of the city of Palm Coast does hereby proclaim Monday, July 10th, 2017, in recognition of the 100th anniversary of the Flagler County Sheriff's Office, and urges all of its citizens to recognize this hallowed occasion with a spirit of gratitude, community, and cooperation. Signed this 20th day of June 2017, City of Palm Coast, Florida, Mayor Melissa Holland. Well, thank you, Mayor and, uh, and Council, uh, for recognizing uh, both our current and past employees of the Sheriff's Office. 100th anniversary uh, only comes around once, and probably none of us will be here for the, uh, the second uh, uh, round. So it's great to uh, recognize uh, the Sheriff's Office and the men and women who work so hard to serve the community. Uh, I'd also like to invite you, you'll get a formal invitation, but you and in a community are invited to the Sheriff's Office on July 10th at 11 a.m. where we will have a, uh, a little ceremony recognizing the start of the 100th anniversary. And as a little tidbit of uh, historical information, the uh, current um, uh, tax collector, Suzanne Johnston, it was her husband's grandfather that was the very first sheriff of Flagler County. Wow. And uh, so a lot of history. And, in, uh, in Flagler County. So we hope that you can uh, make it on, on July 10th. Our deputies will be wearing a commemorative badge that they designed uh, for this year, starting on July 9th, paid for by the drug dealers in Flagler County. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for 
keeping our community safe and continuing to be very proactive and vigilant um, with everything you're doing and uh, actually entering into. So we're very appreciative, and I know the residents are as well. So thank you. Thank you. I have a great team. Thank you. Agenda item number four is a proclamation recognizing June 20th, 2017 through June 27th, 2017 as Caregiver Recognition Week in the City of Palm Coast. Council Member Shipley will be presenting. Whereas caregivers are tasked with the most admirable, loving responsibility to give hope, inspiration, and protection to those who are not capable taking care of themselves. And whereas caregivers consistently offer a gentle, soothing tenderness to their patients by bathing, dressing, massaging, completing household chores, preparing meals, managing medications, and encouraging mental alertness. And whereas over 61 million compassionate caregivers across the United States are committed to keeping our grandparents, parents, aunts, uncles, siblings, children, and friends healthy and safe, either in their homes, in hospitals, nursing homes, doctor's office, and assisted living facilities. And whereas both the caregiver and the patient frequently approach their relationship with common dignity and spirit so that the bond between them strengthens with a confidence that goes far beyond the basic standard of care. And whereas caregivers often provide such plentiful care and devotion to their patients, their support can lead to their own physical and mental strain with little concern for their personal well-being. Whereas Vitas Healthcare is, is investing time, effort, and support to empower caregivers to function in their vital role. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed, the Palm Coast Mayor and City Council officially designate the week of June 20th to the 27th, 2017, as Caregiver Recognition Week in Palm Coast and urge our entire community to remember not only the quality of service they give to our residents in need, but also the quality of love they put into what they are doing. Signed this 20th day of June, 2017, City of Palm Coast, Melissa Holland, Mayor. Good morning, Good council morning. members and mayor. My name is Dr. Alma Dixon, and I am the caregiver advocate for VITAS Healthcare. I am joined by Holly Luther, my colleague, and Donna DeRusso-Smith. We would like to thank you and the council for joining us in celebrating and recognizing the caregivers who work and serve tirelessly in often ways that go unrecognized to make sure that all of many of our loved ones are cared for. So thank you very much for this honor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you again to all the caregivers that provide that support for our residents. We could not do it without you. So thank you.
Okay, we'll now move to agenda item number five. This is a second reading. Um, this is an ordinance, so I would look to our uh, city attorney to read the ordinance, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Ordinance 2017, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palm Coast, Florida, repealing and replacing Chapter 2, Article 1, Division 3, Purchases and Contractual Services, Sections 2-27 through 2-31, and repeal Chapter 16, Article 6, Section 16-201 through 16-206 of the Code of the Ordinances of the City of Palm Coast, providing for severability, providing for codification, providing for conflicts, and providing for an effective date. That's the ordinance by title, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Landon. Good morning, City Council, and, and welcome, Jen. Uh, this is a second reading of uh, the ordinance for updating our purchasing policy. Uh, you have had uh, a workshop on this with a fairly lengthy presentation. Uh, you've heard the first reading. Uh, there have been no changes, uh, no additional comments. We believe it's ready for final adoption at this time. Any council questions or comments on this agenda item? Right, I'll open up to the public for public comment. Any member of the public wish to comment on agenda um, item number five, please do so at this time. And then I'll close public comment. I'll take it back to this council and entertain a motion. Move approval. Moved. Second. And seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, it passes unanimously. Agenda item number six, uh, once again, is an ordinance. So I will look to our city attorney. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. And Jennifer Nix here for Bell, Bill Reichman. William Reichman. Thank you, yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, this is Ordinance 2017, Volunteer Firefighter Retirement System. An ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palm Coast, amending Chapter 2, Administration, Article 6, Retirement, Division 2, Volunteer Firefighter Retirement System and Trust Fund. Amending Section 2-526, Definitions. Amending Section 2-529, Finances and Fund Management. Amending Section 2-532, Pre-Retirement Death. Amending Section 2-533, Disability. 2-535, Optional Forms of Benefits. Providing for codification, providing for severability of provisions, repealing all ordinances and conflicts herewith, and providing an effective date. That's the ordinance by title, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Landon. Mayor, City Council, this is truly a housekeeping item. Uh, the attorney uh, for uh, the board that oversees our volunteer retirement program uh, reviews. Um, our ordinance to make sure it stays in compliance with state law and any legal issues that have come up through the courts. Uh, this is making minor adjustments. We've got a letter of, that has no impact on the actual retirement fund. Uh, this is a first reading. We believe it's ready for uh, approval of the first reading. Council members, any question or discussion? Seeing none, I'll open it to the public. Any member of the public wish to make public comment on agenda item number six, please do so at this time. I'll close public comment, take it back to this council, uh, entertain a motion. Move approval. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none, it passes unanimously. Move to agenda item number seven, other business. Sorry, I cannot read. Reconsideration of paving the path through the F section via the FPNL easement. Mr. Landon. Yes, I, um, uh, what I'd like to do is just give the history and background. Um, Carl and Jose are here to answer any of the uh, technical de details. Um, this path has got an interesting history. Um, it actually started before I came here in 2006. It was um, one of the first paths that uh, the city had intended to uh, install in, in the neighborhoods right after we uh, did Pine Lakes Parkway. Uh, at that time, the path was, was completed except for paving. Uh, and the neighborhood uh, residents came out that were adjacent to the path uh, to city council meeting made it very clear they did not want the path in their neighborhood. Uh, 
that was the only comment city council heard at the time. So they said, well, if the neighborhood doesn't want it, then we will uh, stop the paving. So it was not paved. Uh, it, at that point, uh, was no longer on our capital improvement pro program and wasn't uh, slated to be continued. Uh, since that time, we have literally constructed over 100 miles of paths throughout Palm Coast. That's been one of the most popular programs that we've had uh, during the last 10 years. Uh, we've, we've had a master plan. That master plan basically calls for constructing uh, uh, sidewalks or paths along all of our major streets that do not have residential connections to them. Uh, and we have completed most of, of that, uh, that program. We still have a few left. Uh, the, the next two on the, uh, that were uh, on the list of priorities is uh, Sesame, the Sesame Citation Loop, and then uh, Lakeview. And uh, both of those are uh, scheduled to get started this year. Uh, however, um, city council members started hearing from uh, the F section neighborhood, if you will, or the area uh, in the adjacent to this uh, FPNL path. We call it FPNL easement path. It's city owned property, but it's got the high wire easement on it, so that's why we refer to it as that. So during your strategic planning process uh, a few months ago, uh, as a result of comments you've heard from residents in this area, you've actually included it on your priorities to. Uh, finish the, the FPL easement path. Uh, that normally would get a project started, you know, and then it would have to come to city council, go through the budget process, and, and um, be authorized in, in the budget, um, and uh, get plugged into our, our work program. Uh, during that, or shortly after that, uh, we had the tragedy on uh, Lakeview that uh, caused students to want to get involved and they made a passionate presentation to you and, and talked about street lights and the fact that we needed paths uh, that would make it safer to get to and from school and just safer in the neighborhoods all, all around. So at that time, uh, you said we need to move forward with uh, paving this path uh, through the FPNL easement. Normally what we do is, is that gets once again incorporated as a project. However, my construction management team uh, came up with an idea that uh, said we could actually expedite this path uh, at the direction of city council if they wanted to do that uh, by incorporating an existing project, and that is our street overlay pro program. Because the majority of the path was already complete, it was really just a paving project, and we were already out to bid uh, accepting bid proposals for our annual street overlay program. So uh, they put together the specs real quick based on the plans and, and asked the uh, contractors that were bidding on our overlay project to include this path in it. So that's why it became not a separate project, but because it was all almost completed, we were able to, to expedite it. Um, City Council approved that um, contract, which include the paving of, of this path, uh, but it was understood that, uh, and was actually stated at that meeting, uh, that the uh, staff, along with the students, had been organizing in a separate parallel path uh, a neighborhood meeting to let the neighborhood know what the plans were. Uh, and if uh, city council heard from the neighbors about not wanting this path or wanting something different or some kind of uh, adjustment that uh, we still had the opportunity to accommodate that. You have heard from the, some people and asked for that. So at your last workshop, you asked that uh, this be reconsidered today. Uh, and, and, and so that is what is on the agenda. Uh, basically, if you can continue to move forward with um, the overlay street program, which would include this path. Uh, we could, uh, we haven't signed the contract with that uh, overlay contractor yet, so we could remove it from the scope if you so desire. Uh, you also, see a couple of council members have asked for uh, uh, some uh, estimates as to uh, if we were to build the path along O'King's Road. 
uh, it would be a temporary path because we've always had plans to build a path along our sidewalks along Oak Kings Road when we widen it because we're basically finished with the design of four-laning Oak Kings Road. And, and so when the uh, curb and gutter and the underground storm system, et cetera, goes in, the path would, would have to come out and sidewalks would be installed in its place. Uh, but uh, Carl is prepared to talk about very preliminary numbers uh, about the uh, temporary, uh, a, a proposal of a temporary path along Old Kings Road and the timing. Those would really haven't been designed or anything, so those would be separate projects or a separate project, and he can go over that with you. So that's basically the background. Um, just looking for direction from City Council today as to how you'd like to proceed. Great. A question there. Yeah, I will open it up oh, okay. um, to um, City Council questions at this time or comments. Vice Mayor Nobile. Um, how is it that we built hundreds of miles of path and we neglected all these years to put in a path to get these kids to school? I mean, I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to figure out. Uh, we, we went to put a path in 10 years ago, and it got... You know, we got the, the, the residents didn't want it. We, the council said, never mind. And then we went ahead in those 10 years and put in many miles of path, uh, um, the concrete path around all the major roads. Why wasn't this? Is there, why wasn't this on that plan, being that this would have been the only method for these kids to get to school? Well, uh, actually, once again, uh, our priority was... Um, get kids to school, including Matanzas. But if you think about the long list we had and the fact that we you know, stayed within our means, yeah. um, most of our paths were geared towards the schools. Uh, in the meantime, since that time, we have, uh, we have the path along Matanzas Woods Parkway. We have completed the path that's served by this neighborhood at Palm Harbor. We uh, did the Palm Harbor extension, the Old Kings Road extension, and shut down uh, Forest Grove it was all geared towards uh, this high school. But, but in addition to that, we um, have a path along State Road 100 for kids to get to F FPC. Right. Uh, so, Mr. Nobile, the answer to your question is, is we had a priority list. Um, and why not Old Kings Road? Why didn't it hit the top of the, of the list? Anywhere, I don't care. Uh, you know. It is um, because the, at the time, the discussion was is that we have all these paths that we're trying to complete. It makes more sense to complete those that will be permanent versus doing a temporary one and taking the resources for that temporary path away from the one that's leading to FPC or maybe the Palm Harbor path. Okay. So it was, you know, it was setting priorities. That's uh, fine. I just want to, I yeah. just want to know what was thought of. Yeah, absolutely. And and it's always said yes. We need a path along. Uh, uh, Old Kings Road. Uh, but you have to um, look back at the history, you know, because I have a long history is that, like, Seminole Woods was the high priority. Why? Because we had a young man that died in, in getting hit on his bicycle on Seminole Woods. Sesame was a priority. We had a young mother that was hit and killed. You know, it, those were definitely now, yeah, but those were driving those priorities at the time, just like the, the tragedies are driving priorities today. So it wasn't that it wasn't considered. It was considered. It was a matter of where, where you're going to put your resources, and it's always a, um, uh, difficult choices because you'd like to do them all at once. I mean, I'm, I'm passionate about this. You know I'd love to do them all uh, right now. It, but then you've got the financial constraints, and not just financial constraints. But the resources, the staff time, the, the, the fact that we go after grant dollars to help with this because it's millions of dollars. So uh, it isn't a matter of ignoring because we've actually built many of paths trying to get uh, the kids to school, including Matanzas. A lot, millions of dollars into those programs. Uh, I have other questions, but I'll wait till Carl does his. Is Carl, are you going to do so? Or are, we just, are they just here for questions? Just they, yes. Questions. Oh, okay. Yes. So then I have questions. All right, so continue. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, the stretch of Florida Park, uh, I'm sorry, Old Kings Road that we're going to do on this, is that pre-set? Is that, was that, 
I mean, was that designed and everything taken care of? No, that, that small little connector from Frontier to the Old King's easement is one that we'd have to work on putting together. So, so you're saying we can do that, which is about a quarter of the whole path. But, and then the other path, the rest of the path is going to take two years? So, I, I, you, you, see what I, you see what I'm just trying to understand? If we're going to do that, if we're going to do that Florida Park stretch there to get us to the FPL, uh, and it wasn't designed, and it was, why, why can't we just do what we're going to do there? Uh, that's a statement. I don't, you, you can't answer that. I, that's just a statement. Why, why, I'm just wondering why, if we're going to do that piece, I, why we can't go I, straight up. I, I would love to, okay, to, go ahead. Yes. To, to address that. We, we're trying to accommodate city council. Okay. You know, we, we actually, you, you made it very clear this was a high, high priority. They bust their rear ends to try to accommodate city council and yeah. make it happen. Uh, they're taking resources away from other, other things. Um, the, uh, if you can do the same, you can say, okay, stop the, Seminole, the Sesame Path. You can, you know, they'll bust their rear ends for you to, to oh, I know. Get, get it all done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to take resources away from other, I mean, because, you know, we're talking about our construction crews. We're talking about construction ma management uh, people. Realizing we've got eight people working on our projects and we've got 59 active projects. Adding another project, sure, but it, which one do, do you want to uh, now delay that uh, we've already promised and already have in our work plan? Yeah. That's, you know, but if you want to say, uh, stop Sesame, stop this, stop that. Uh, Thanks for making me the bad guy. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, you don't have to be. We're, we're saying we, we're, we would proceed I, as I planned no, I understand and then plug fully. this in like any other project. Yeah, no, I understand. One more question. Oh, it, does this um, $185,000 cost for the FPL path have lighting included in it? No, there's no, no lighting included in that cost. Hey, there's got to be lighting in that path. I mean, it, we can't. That path can't. I mean, it, we, we're going to have times where these kids are going to be on their way to school and it's going to be, you know, pitch black. And then after activities, I mean, there has to be lighting. Now, here, here's my question, because that's what's going to come up right after the path goes in. <clears throat> it's going to be, wait, we can't use this. There's no lights. Would, what would it take to put lighting in there? I don't mean cost, but would, would FPL just hang poles, or would we, we have to we, be private? We've actually, um, that question's come up, and we've done, once again, it's all very preliminary, because this is uh, right. very, very quick. Um, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be like a street light. You would want to do... So it'd be uh, like the, around uh, the park. Yeah, pedestal lights, or you could do uh, lights that are actually ground level. Uh, there's a couple of those kind of options. We've looked at some of those very preliminary. Carl actually has a, a range of what uh, the uh, lighting for this path would be. Okay. Um, and so, Carl, what, what was the range that you had? Um, it depends. Well, it's very preliminary because there are so many different types of fixtures out there and what type of light level you're looking to achieve, where can you get the power from, and you did mention FPL out there. FPL does not light paths. They light roadways only. So this would have to be city purchased fixtures, uh, city provided equipment um, and installed. Um, I'm trying to remember the, I, you know, I apologize. I'm trying to, drawing a blank right now on my fixture cost. We did do some analysis on that. Um, I'd be happy to get back with you on that number. Yeah, if you could. Um, um, I'll, I'll have it here in a minute. Okay. Um, oh, just a minute. Okay. Then yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yes, good, I'm good. good. Council membership. <laughs> of the, um, the budget for 185 that starts June 2017, why can we not take that money and that crew and put them on Old King's Road and get it going from there. I mean, I don't know why we're waiting to January 2018 for a begin date. When we I'm just going to say we're not having comments at this meeting. Public comment will occur after the discussion by the council. So please be respectful. We have rules and procedures and policies here that dictate how we run these meetings. Um, so I'm just wondering why can't we take that same crew um, take that crew, take that money, and start the process going forward on Old King's Road. 
The, the bulk of that $185,000 right now is with a paving contractor, so city crew time, is there, the project's already designed. So the, the staff time in preparation to get started on the project is minimal, and there's a contractor doing most of the work for that cost. The, a path on Old Kings Road would one require design up front, and then it would require whether we put it out to bid and have someone pave it, or we construct it ourselves with concrete. Um, so the, it's really the one in Old Kings Road is not ready to start, and then again we have other projects in the pipeline: the Lake View, the Sesame. So that's why we cannot even begin those other this project until January because of those ongoing current projects. So what would you do with the men that we have put aside for this? Or is it completely contracted out to? There, there's some staff time involved with this, but it's, it's minimal compared to constructing the path on Old Kings Road. And the, in 2008, when we originally prepped this, um, would we have to re-prep it? Right. It would be basically scraping away some of the, the, we basically threw some topsoil on it with some seeds, so that would get scraped down and, and rolled and compacted for the asphalt company to come in and, and pave it. So the design that starts at Frontier, that as Mr. Nobile was saying, it starts at Frontier and it goes to where the FPNL patch goes down. Why wouldn't that design continue going? I mean, it's pretty straightforward how that path would go. Um, why couldn't we just do a temporary path from there all the way down to the Kingdom Hall? Right. We would have to look at, right now, that area is used as drainage for the existing roadway. So we would have to look at how the drainage patterns work now that the path's not going to impede that to flood the roadway. Um, there is some, so there is some design work that would have to be looked at and make sure that it works correctly, that the drainage is still going to function properly. <coughs> so it's a longer segment. You're talking, you know, a sm small piece in Old Kings Road to, you know, four or five times that length, you know, if you continue it all the way down Old Kings Road. So it's not, it's not like you can just use one typical section all the way up. It would be similar, but the whole area is going to have to be looked at in terms of drainage mainly for the most part. So if we already have the 185 and then we take the cost that is 338 and we subtract the two, we take the difference. Is there no place we can take money from to make up that difference? And, and these numbers in here are very preliminary. I mean, there's, it's not based on any, it's based on ex other past projects, um, the, like I said, the design's not done specifically on this, so if there are drainage issues and we have to modify drainage, you know, that, that cost could change. You know, it's just a very preliminary number right now. If, if we were to drop everything and just make it, get a design going on this, how long would it take to get a design on that small piece of Old Kings Road? Right now, because we'd have to go through permitting as well, and we have a current active design project on Sesame that we're working on now through the rest of this year. So either we would stop work on the design of the Sesame path and begin design work on this path, or we'd wait till January when the Sesame path is designed to begin. It's an either or option. <coughs> you don't have staff available to design both at the same time. I just want to make sure yep. she's done. Oh, yeah, I'm done. Go ahead. Carl, uh, can we, instead of contra uh, uh, concrete, we can do flat, uh, what do you call it? Shell. Yeah, yeah. What do you call it? You know what I'm saying. Shell or lime rock or some, some oh, type of hard even, gravel material. <laughs> yes, because we got this asphalt going up the road up the, you know, why can't the, can the asphalt just continue on? Because that wouldn't take from our crews. That, well, right now, our contract is just laying the asphalt. The preparation underneath the asphalt would have to be done by city crews. Okay. And we'd have to do the design to check, check the elevations for drainage. You know, that, that, you know, it's not just a matter of putting down the asphalt on the grass that's out there now. The concept is, as our crews does concrete, uh, we don't have the paving equipment, so if you if we use asphalt, then uh, we can do a, a either our crews does the base 
and then the asphalt company comes in and, and uh, overlays it, or we can contract the whole thing out, and they do from uh, start to finish. Um, those are the kind of things that we'd have to plug into the program if, if we start this project. And what are we doing on that stretch of Florida, of Old Kings, that leads to from Frontier to the, is that concrete? That, that was, that was going to be asphalt as well, so they would continue the asphalt all the way down. So we're going to prep that, that ground? Correct. And we're going to run asphalt. And again, I just want to, it's about a quarter of the full distance. And we can do that in a month or two, but the rest, I can't, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I, I understand what you're saying about drainage, and I, I, I'm fully aware, uh, but it appears to me that this path would be so far, I mean, it's not close to the road, it's not going to be like, like running alongside, five, or it doesn't have to, let me rephrase that, like five feet from the road. Uh, I, I don't really see the effect of the drain of a, of drainage on a temporary path that's going to be so far from the road. I'm, I'm just having a hard time with that. I'm also thinking, you know, with this extra money for the lighting, we have poles out. Well, we don't have poles out there. FPNL has poles out there already, and we could throw, and we can ask have them to, you know, put lights on. I'm trying to take the whole thing and saying, okay, we're going to spend a little extra on the path but then again we're going to spend a little more on the on the easement path because we got to put lighting in it's going to ultimately it's got to have lighting i mean it won't, it, it's not going to float uh without any lighting in there and then my problem is at the end of this when we do widen the road and we have a path on old king's road we're going to have that we're, i mean we're going to have paths too so close to each other that I don't understand which one's going to be used. I mean, it, it's almost because, I, I, you know, I, I'm just trying to keep the path system consistent. And if there wasn't an outcry from the people who live there, I wouldn't care. I would say, yeah, fine, go ahead, you know, put it in. But, you know, I, what my thinking is I'm trying to keep everyone happy, which is very difficult, I know, and almost impossible, let's say. But, uh, you know, so I really would like to, to, to see, you know, I really like to know that we can't do this. I mean, I, I want you to tell me there's no way I can do this until 2019. And that's concrete. Let's even say, I'm not, and I'm not thinking just concrete, I'm thinking any method. You see what I'm saying? I'm not saying, you know, where we can free up our crews. And I don't even care at this point, I, personally, if it, care, if it costs a little more. We'll just take some money from the rest of the road service. I mean, my road is getting, is on the list for resurfacing. It's livable. There's, I mean, there's no potholes. There's, I mean, you take my road off, and, and I know there's a few other roads that could come off, but that, that's all I got. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, any other questions? Um, yeah, I had a, a couple, um, I, and I think this is primarily for you, Carl. The two estimates that we're looking at here for the concrete and the asphalt extension along Old Kings Road, if I understand what you're saying, both of those estimates are based on city crews doing the base work, the prep work for whatever surface would be put down. Is that accurate? Correct. Okay. Um, and the difference in price then for those two um, estimates reflects... No, actually, reflects I, I, what? I, I mean, I'm incorrect in, in my statement. The asphalt one is totally bid out for construction so that's, dollars. So we would just yes. request would, a bid to bid to correct. build an asphalt path from Frontier Drive to to where the path begins again up by the Kingdom Hall. Is that so? That's a, in essence an all-in number. Okay. Um, and I, I, I think you addressed this with, with Vice Mayor Nobile's um, question. Are there any other surfaces that have been considered? Uh, I mean, the, the biggest problem I have with the old Kings Road extension is it's temporary. Now, if you want to be philosophical, everything in life is temporary. But 
this is, I hope, a lot more temporary than that. I mean, if I understand the time frame, and, and please correct me if I'm wrong, we're hoping this segment of Old Kings Road will be four-laned within the next three to five years. Is that realistic at this point? You know, right now, it, DOT has a five-year- funding, funding. Yeah, funding, mean, funding for funding. DOT and the current work, five-year work program that's not in that five-year work program at this time. Right now, we're in the right-of-way phase of the project. We're working through easements and some right-of-way purchases. Right. And once that's complete, DOT is <laughs> going to have a much stronger push on finding dollars for the construction phase. And we are entertaining and looking at phasing the widening project to move it along quicker. Um, it is our top priority project, the city's top priority project with uh, DOT and TPO at this point. So, you know, it's, a, it's anyone's, you know, best guess at this time as to when they find the dollars as to, to fit into the program. Okay. So that being said and given the uncertainty, I mean, are there any other surfaces for this path if we did it in Old Kings Road that should be looked at? I mean, shell we, line we, I mean, we looked at shell. I mean, there, there's some added <clears throat> cost to shell. Um, the, the two issues in this particular instance, I know we do have shell like, like Grand Swamp and some other locations. Um, one is because this is a drainage area for the roadway, when that gets saturated, it gets not, not passable. You know, it gets muddy, it gets soft. And being need to be ADA compliant becomes problematic. Yeah. Um, it, and it's a lot more maintenance in terms for city staff to keep up. Um, I'm not saying it, it can't be done and we wouldn't do it. You know, maybe we pay portions of it and some of it could be the shell, but it's uh, definitely not a preferred option. Doing a thinner asphalt layer, something that's not going to last, you know, long, long time, you know, would probably be a, a better option. Okay, I'm sorry, you said that one option would be a thinner asphalt layer, or is that the asphalt option that we're looking yeah, at here? Well, normally the asphalt here is more of a limited, I guess it would be a, a, a thinner layer of asphalt. It may crack sooner, it may not last as long, it may not hold up as well to vehicles driving over it, but knowing that it's a temporary path, that'd probably be a preferred option as opposed to doing a shell path because of the maintenance okay. and upkeep and passability for, for uh, pedestrians. Okay. Uh, and again, I, I'm not, maybe I'm not listening as closely as I should. For the asphalt path that we're looking at on this this view that's up on the monitors is that the thinner asphalt or is that a different thickness i mean in other words are there two asphalt options Th this one here i out. mean we really haven't done a, a section this here is based off the white view path which is our standard asphalt program so the the number conceivably okay. could come down slightly if we went with a little thinner course or a different asphalt mix um, okay. that's something we would look at during the design option and, and the concrete option, which would be entirely city forces and entirely city design, as I understand it. Um, do you have any, uh, I mean, one of the concerns with either of these options is the timing. I mean, neither one of them get a path completed before early 2019, which is another school year and a half of exposure of the students. Um, what would be the time frame and the cost, A, if the city, well, let me, let me back up and ask it in two parts because I don't want to be unfair to the, to the staff. The staff is going to design either of these two options, is that correct? The, the, the no, extension of The bid one is completely bid out, design and construction. That's, that includes the design. So if the city were to bid out the design of the concrete path up Old Kings Road, what would that that would be additional cost because we wouldn't be using our staff, but what would you think the cost would be and what would you think the time would be to take that off of staff and bring in whoever? I mean, I could name people, but I think because of the bidding process, we're not supposed to be naming people. There are plenty of engineering firms that could design that for you, I assume. Yeah, there's several. Um, I mean, the engineering firm that's working on the four laning of the roadway has a lot of the base information, so yeah. that would definitely speed up the process because they have some base information to work off of. But, you know, because they have that base information, the design cost comes down. There's less, there's no survey work that would be needed because that, that information exists. You know, 
I could definitely look into to what the cost would be. I, if I had to guess, it would be you know under a hundred thousand dollars for the design portion of it and permitting. Um, okay, and okay, so if that's and timing, we don't know. We'd have to put out a bid. Right, based on the, the consultant's workloads, that that'd be a question we typically ask is propose a schedule of when you could begin and complete the design. Okay. And is, is that just so I understand, is that something that we would have to bid out? Or if we have a design, if we're working with an engineering team for the four laning of Old Kings Road, would we be able to direct them to add that to their scope without? Uh, I mean, I'm not trying to be difficult here. I just want to make sure we don't start raising hopes or making promises that in the end wind up taking twice as long as the options we've got here before us. Um, is, is that a question we can answer today? You know, oh. it, it gets a little complicated because our DM, DRP contract is with DO, DOTs funding the right. design work of that contract. Okay. So to modify the existing contract, because DOT is involved and they wouldn't be funding this portion of the project, it would be very difficult to modify the existing contract. So okay. more than likely we would go through an RFQ re request for qualification process okay. and select firms based on feedback that we get and who's most qualified and then negotiate a scope and fee with them. Okay. And, and I guess one, one final question that I have on the alternates then is, again, the concrete path up Old Kings Road assumes that the, con the actual work, the, po the, the forming, the base work, the, the pouring the concrete is going to be done by city crews. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Again, would we gain any, t I assume it would cost more, but then again, we got city crews to work on other projects that they're already working on. What, what would it do to the, and I'm not asking you for to the penny, I understand we're talking preliminary here, but if we were to bid that out and hire, I mean, once again, there's plenty of people that can, you know, do the base work and form up the, the concrete and pour the concrete for us. But what would that do to the cost of that option? I mean, I raise it, I assume, but do right, you have it would a feel raise for it. how we, much? We bid actually, when we did Beltaire, um, through the DOT grants, all the way down south of 100 and a little bit north of 100, we bid out concrete and asphalt for the contractor to install. And the, the pricing was not that much different at the time. It all depends on where the concrete and asphalt prices are at the day. Um, so they're very similar to have a contractor install it. So you're saying if, if the city prepared the base and then we hired out someone to either lay concrete or lay asphalt? Or if we just if we just hired somebody to do the whole thing, see, I, I'm not I'm, I'm not clear on why hiring somebody to do soup to nuts asphalt is one option. I guess what I'm asking is, is there any difference if we hire somebody soup to nuts to do concrete versus asphalt? Just take the city it's, crews out of it completely and let you guys keep doing what you're doing. It can doing. be very similar in cost. It would I mean, be, we could even bid it out as an alternate so we have both prices and okay. we could go with the And, and the as far as option. is there any, any difference in the timing if we were to do that? I, I see the city crew, the city option, if you want to call it that, the concrete uh, starts earlier and finishes three months earlier. Um, the, the asphalt option apparently starts because there's bidding Earlier, time involved, but, yeah. it's going through okay. the whole bidding process for the design and the construction phase. Okay. Um, asphalt goes down pretty quick, you know, but getting the base layer prepared takes time. So it all depends how many crews the contractor puts on it. Um, I would say they're, they're fairly comparable time-wise, either option. Okay. okay. I think that's all the questions I had. Thank you. Council Member Clufus. <clears throat> So my question is, FPNL, this is their easement. Do they have any benefit for this path going down? And if they do, was there any foresight or attempt to get them to chip in for the cost of the $185,000? Will it make it more accessible for them or improve their ability to do whatever they have to do in that easement path? Um, it, it may, they have their own service road in this easement. So this was completely independent of their service road. Understood. So. Yeah, we made a clear pathway, you know, did, did clear some underbrush, but they go through that maintenance option. I would say it was, it was minimal additional advantage to them. Understood. Thank you. 
Um, the 562000 that's a bid you've already put out and received that bid? No, that, that's not a bid. We, we put out a bid for the white, path on white view to design and to construct that path. It's very similar in length, um, very similar pathway, you know, it was done in a grass cleared area, very similar type project. So we took the, the bid from that project and just use a linear foot cost or mile cost and, and just applied it to this particular project. And that's how we came up with that figure. We had a little bit of cost for inflation because that was several years ago. Um, but it's going to be in that general um, amount. I mean, without a design, you know, that, that's a comparable project that's similar. So I guess my, my thing is, and I know we don't have to vote on it to even make it happen, but my thing would be, if, if, if this was an emergency situation, kind of like the hurricanes were, where we had people that worked one job, but we pulled them from those jobs, city workers, to make something happen in an emergency situation, and we did something like that. We took our workers that were doing maybe the medians or, or mowing lawns or something and put them onto something like this. Um, is that something that, I mean, I just feel like we're still waiting for more numbers, more this. This is an emergency situation kind of thing where we're saying, this is what we want to do. Can you make it happen? <clears throat> and I, I feel like you can make it happen, but it's just not, um, you're still looking at the other option. But if that option wasn't there and Old Kings Road was the only option, could you make it happen? I mean, right now we, we have very limited staff that can do design work in-house. So to, the first step would begin the design complete. So right now it's, it's either stop working on the current design project, which is Sesame, and begin work on this project is an option. I mean, you know, we, we need direction on that. Once again, yeah, I, I want to make it very clear that, um, you, you know, you can set the priority that we stop the Sesame project and move those resources to the Old Kings Road temporary path. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's basically the, the option because we are currently designing a path right now and we currently have the schedule uh, to construct that with city crews. That's taking that in consideration is where you get this schedule. We did not uh, uh, schedule stopping uh, another path that we've already got in essence got started because this was where we're having the water line going in and we've already got the whole uh, area uh, dug up and filled back in and now we're going to go in and, and lay a path on top of it if you want us to take all the resources off of sesame and put it onto this we weren't making that decision but you can make that decision i don't want to make that decision i would rather find another way that we get like he said the um, the asphalt may be not as thick, yeah. put something there that's and, and then more that's, temporary. And, and that's why we said, okay, so let's don't take our crew, we have one construction crew, and stop a project they're working on. Let's go out to bid and have a, a contractor do this. And we can go find an engineering firm to design, go out to bid. Uh, but, you know, that's a, the that's a schedule where you start getting into, uh, you got to go through the process. And a process is selecting an engineering firm. They do, um, one of the things that Carl said that would expedite it, I hadn't thought of that, is that if, and very likely we use the same firm, the survey work's done. Surveyors take a long time to get, go out there. If we design it ourselves, our surveyors are going to have to go out and, and, and survey it to make sure that, you know, it, it uh, is designed correctly. So, that, you know, and once again, the schedule's here. Um, you know, Carl put this together very, very quickly. Uh, it can, there's a lot of factors that can cause a schedule to be advanced or delayed. Um, we're, we're just trying to give you a rough estimate. If you tell us to create a project, we will get after it and give you more detailed information as we really get a, put a project manager on this project. But we haven't got a project here. We've got a project manager doing anything. We're just doing something very preliminary. So this easement, I know from talking to the students that it's heavily used to go to school. And even if they had the option to go to Old Kings on a superior path, they're going to choose the path of least resistance, which is going down this easement path. Do we have any type of figure um, 
on how many students actually do traverse this path to get to and fro uh, school. I know it's significant. It's, there's probably 250 students who live in this vicinity, 175 for sure. We, we don't have any information on that. It, my, my opinion, um, they're going to go direct route. And, Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the, they can still use this path. Going to Old Kings Road is actually taking them out of their way, and then they have to come back. Um, so whatever that number is, we don't have that number. But the fact of it is, is that um, people that are using the path today in its current form, I think will continue to use it if they're trying to get to and from school. Okay. And also, I mean, just when you're speaking about uh, the history of how we created a priority list and programs. Um, the first priority did start out with safety to schools, and that's how this so, whole trail system in Palm Coast um, was thought through. Now, obviously, none of us were sitting up here in 2008 to make a decision on whether to opt out of this uh, proposal or not, but um, the one on FPC on 100, um, before that was put in, that was unbelievably dangerous, and, and I could not even imagine. But um, FPC has a greater population base as far as students than does Matanzas. So I just wanted to put that out there for, for sort of clarification. So, um, and obviously, it, geographically, that's why, uh, because there's the population base is greater in that uh, area over by FPC. So. Um, no further questions at this time. We'll open up to public comment. Um, any member of the public can speak. Uh, please state your name for the record, and your three minutes will begin. Lewis McCarthy, Palm Coast. It's one thing I, well, I remember history when people objected to having a path near or behind their house and everything. And it was those people who put down the idea of a path. So that's history. Now the worm is turned. But the one thing that got me up on my feet is the idea of pitting one area, Sesame Street and, and uh, the F section. Pitting one area against the other is no good. I remember what happened in, uh, over there in, uh, in South Seminole and the, and the deaths over there. And the people who used to come in here and say, we're a forgotten area of Palm Coast. I don't live in, Ses I don't live in uh, uh, Seminole, but I can tell you, I remember it. And I remember the people that used to come in here and say, "Well, we're, we're forgotten. We're the forgotten people." And I don't want, I don't want anybody or to shift this from that. This has been going on for Ses for, for Seminole Woods for a long, long time uh, to to complete the paths and everything in in uh, Seminole Woods, and they're just as important as in the F section, or the P section, or the so-and-so section. All of us come together. The main thing, that's the main thing. Thank, Thank you. you. Next speaker. Robin Rucker, Palm Coast. First of all, before I begin, if you are here opposed to the bike path along the FPL easement, would you either raise your hand or stand? Actually, ma'am. We don't, we don't conduct meetings like right. that, but thank you. All right. Um, first of all, an answer to the question of how many students use that now, zero. It has been reclaimed a lot of areas by the nature, um, so they're going to have to go through in some areas and clear out the trees, et cetera. Plus, back when they first started this, they had to bring in people to remove the gopher tortoises. They are back, so that's also going to have to be um, calculated in. Um, using that path, Again, if you want to get off the path between the two roadways, how are you going to do that? Go through someone's yards. 
property owners are responsible. Again, as mentioned before, someone throws out a cigarette while they're going along that path. We just came out of a drought. There could have been a fire. Um, again, a number of wild animals out there. Again, snakes. There are a lot of snakes out there, and the path is a great place to sun. Um, high power lines are back there. Again, you know, kids are kids. You know, all it takes is a dare. Senior Commander Mark Carmen mentioned that there was uh, no higher crime rate along the pass, but again, there aren't any paths that go between private backyards. They either go along a road where people can see, or even a waterway that people can see. So this is very secluded. We're concerned about the safety of the students. We're not opposed to the bike path, just we would like the bike path up Old Kings. Thank you. Next speaker. Can you put the map back up? So that everybody can see the uh, layout of the path. Anybody? <laughs> Carl, can you do that? through the FPL easement was 2.2 miles. If they went along Old Kings, it was 1.7. It's a much shorter distance in a straight line up Old Kings than it is through that pathway. So there's a big savings to be had in that. The path that goes through the FPL, there's only three access points, Kings, Fellowship, and Forest Grove. If you want to get into that path, you'd have to go through people's yards, like Robin just said or you use those three streets. If it goes up Old Kings, you also add in Matanzas Access, the um, Felshire, Fernow, Fenora, Flemingwood, all those streets now can feed into the path if it stays on Old Kings. As far as cost, there is a very sh uh, quick way to do this. It's called Military PSP. It's perforated steel plating. Anytime the military puts in a base that's going to be temporary, they drop these planks in, and they're like a little erector set. They go in five minutes for each one. You can lay that thing out in two weeks. You own those plates after you buy them. You take them up, and you put them somewhere else where you want to have a temporary solution. There's no reason to think about drainage because it's perforated. The water will go in and out of it, no problem. If you're worried about the height, then double the plates so it's a couple inches above the grass. Um, right now, the wars are at a minimal. There's plenty of military surplus equipment to be had. Make a bid on it, especially if you say that you're trying to build a temporary walkway to a school. I would think somebody in the military command in the state of Florida will make some calls for you, and you can pick this up really quick. Um, the, um, the last point I want to make is, and it is glossed over constantly, when they do do the widening, and you guys had said that Matanzas would be five to ten years, all of Old Kings is getting ripped up. So you can't use the FPL path. The section from Frontier to the FPL is going to be ripped up, and all length of Old Kings is going to get ripped up. So there won't be a sidewalk. So the FPL path will be unusable anyhow. Just do a quick temporary path up Old Kings. It's a minimal cost, and it will save lives. I had two close calls yesterday, a walker going to work and a guy on a bike going to work. Everybody's worried about the kids, but there's a lot of civilian traffic on that road. The FPL path is just for the kids going to school, but we need something for all of the civilian traffic. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Uh, Teresa Neff. I'm on Ferndale. Uh, first, I want to thank you because I think you're trying. I'm very grateful to hear that there is um, another suggestion about Old Kings Road. Um, my living with the woods behind me, I've only seen kids there during track and that's once a season. I have never seen kids back there. Another th idea I want you to think of is 
There are buses to take kids to school. High school kids do not think it's cool to get on a bus. And they do not think it's cool to walk because of the elements in this territory with heat all year round. I think those kids are ready to get their own car or go to school by car. I don't understand why you're thinking of high school kids back there. I thought of bikers. That was my first thought of why this path was being put. I never thought of kids, especially high school kids. They're too cool. I'm through. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning, George Mayo, Palm Coast. Uh, it seems that if you take the project of Sesame off the board to do this, you're stopping Sesame being a permanent project. You're stopping that delaying cost and something that's already going. This is a multi-tier project here with the FPL. There is no one solution that's going to solve everything at this point because of Old Kings being widening. If I remember correctly, some meetings ago, we had the group of high school students that came here talking about the problem. They asked for this project. They asked for the path of FPL, that they use it. So while some may drive, the students who are not 16 cannot drive, and it seems like they're using it. To stop and maybe redesign and put up a temporary one along Old Kings means a delay. Uh, it sounded like Carl said that would probably take a year and a half now if we delayed it to redesign and put something along Old Kings. If you wait for Old Kings to be widened, that's obviously a five-year project waiting. This seems to be not the best solution, not a permanent solution, but one that can be done now, basically, here and now. Uh, it will help relieve and help some of the students, and I think not the best alternative, but possibly the one that we can go with now to resolve some of the problems that you're looking at. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. My name is Ron Christione, Palm Coast. Wasn't this originally for uh, going up Old Kings for safety of the children? It's not really about money. It's about the safety of the children. That's what I think we have to think about first. And putting them through the woods isn't very safe. Putting them where people could see them is a lot safer. And the sidewalk that's there now is off the road a ways. If you just continued it off the road, you don't have to worry about too much drainage, water spill from the, from the road. But I think we really just have to think about the safety of these kids. Someday these kids are going to be sitting right where you're sitting. Thank you. Next speaker. Hello. My name's Claudette O'Dowd. Um, I live on Fieldstone, and, and my backyard uh, goes up against towards the easement. Um, as a matter of fact, I believe it says private property, uh, do not enter. I have seen track students back there. As a matter of fact, one of them was my nephew. And I had called the police and said they should not be back there. And he said, oh, uh, somebody called the cops on us. I said, sorry, you shouldn't be back there. There's bad snakes back there. My dog got bit. I had to spend $1,000 to save his life. So I clear back whatever easement I could so many feet from my fencing just so that my pets, my kids would be safe. And it is, I feel safer back there knowing that on the other side are just other residents. And again, students that are back there are cutting through other people's properties. If they get hurt on someone else's backyard, then, then we have another whole nother issue. Um, there's already sidewalks put in and all they need to do on Oak Kings Road, all they need to do is extend it. A temporary um, thing for that is great idea if need be. And um, I don't see why they would need to put in the easement. There's uh, 
Palm Harbor, and then Old Kings Road would be sufficient enough, in my opinion. And uh, I appreciate you hearing me out. Thank you. Next speaker. My name is uh, Vince Politti. I live on Felshire. Uh, I understand PSP. I was in the Army, aviation, helicopters, and uh, PSP goes down. We put 10,000 foot of runway, 100 foot wide, in two weeks. And I'm sure if somebody who knows computers gets on it and speaks with the Army Corps of Engineers, they will give you all the input you need. And uh, the safety of the children comes first, besides money. And as far as uh, path of least resistance, as long as it's not running through your backyard, it's easier for you to say. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning. Uh, I'm Bill Wingate, and I live in the F section. And uh, our property backs up to the power line road. And when they mow it, we have problems with kids running down through there with uh, four-wheelers, so on and so forth. And also, there is a lot of snakes in that area. You know, we, we've killed water moccasins that's come in our yard. We've killed uh, little pygmy rattlesnakes that's come in our yard. And I don't know if anybody's ever looked at this. But also, when we had a problem and we called to report a problem, they say there's nothing they can do about it back there because that's power line property. You know, the police... They don't do anything about it. They say there's the only way they can stop that is if there was no trespassing sign. So if you open that up, naturally there's not going to be any trespassing sign. So you know, uh, you know, you're just going you're just opening up a can of worms right there. You know, and, there, and there's really no way to police that or see what's happening. You know, so you're better off just run your path down Old King Road. Thank you. Next speaker. My name is Richard Torres. I live in F section. Um, Councilman Reynolds said something that made a lot of sense. Eventually, you're going to have two paths. So why do you need two paths? And the money that you would save by not putting this path on the easement, I don't know the numbers, but it just makes more sense. And he brought up a very good point of having two paths. We don't need two paths. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Stephanie Capehart. I live in the C section. Um, I'm actually in support of a path through the FPL easement with one caveat. If it is being presented as a solution for a safety issue for the high school students, then it requires safety parameters like lighting, I know that lighting can be installed with timers, um, motion activated, so it only comes on and off during certain periods. I know that light poles can have AWS uh, transmitters in them to boost cell signals. And I know that they can have like one button emergency 911 calling. So it just seems to me that somewhere we've mixed two different issues, the safety of the children getting to school and the installation of a bike path. So if we're going to put a bike path under the heading of keeping our children safe, it needs to have these items included. Now, if that's not possible, I don't hear any objection from anyone in the community about putting a path down Old King's but it can't wait an indefinite amount of time to be put in. So maybe this military solution is a good option. Maybe there can be a temporary uh, surface put in, less expensive than doing all of the drainage and whatnot, but something to keep the kids off of the roads. And if none of these are possible, there are multiple ways to solve a problem. Has, I would have to question, what research or what options are available in providing transportation to those kids that live within that two mile radius? Thank you. Next speaker.
Emil Neff, and I live on Ferndale. Um, I've lived on Ferndale since 2012. I frequently sit out in my backyard, have coffee. In all the years that I've lived there, I've never seen a child walk through the woods in the back of my house to the school at Matanzas. Never have I ever seen one child back there. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. Dottie Bank Blankenship. I live on Fairbank Lane. Um, my backyard also faces this proposed uh, road. And I just want to reiterate that in, I've lived there since 2007, and uh, my, I have never once seen a kid walking back and forth to school. I've seen the, um, the track team back there. I've seen ATVs back there where I've had to call the police. And I also want to reiterate that it's a, it, it is a wildlife area. There's a lot of wildlife back there. There's turtles. There's um, tons of snakes. Um, there's families of skunk. There's all kinds of things that you see back there. I've seen fox, deer, especially at night. And I just think it would be a mistake to, uh, to use that or, or to use the excuse that you're using it for school children. School children do not walk on that path. Not in all the years that I've been there. Thank you. Next speaker. Hi, my name is Barbara Murphy. I'm a new resident to Palm Coast, and I live in the um, Johnson Beach section of the hammock. Um, my family's lived here for a long time. In fact, my father was killed in an accident, a bicycle accident, riding his bike on Old Kings Road in 1992. It was on the whole other side of um, Old Kings Road. But one of the reasons we moved here in September was um, because we um, really love the fact that there are bike paths in Palm Coast where we can get from one point to another without having to drive. And um, I just wanted to put in my two cents and I appreciate the opportunity to speak because I don't live where the path would be. However, I do take advantage of paths that are out where I live. Uh, to say that I think that to, I think that it's important to think about long term what's good for the community and especially for the environment um, that to have an alternative to driving a car um, is, is a really good thing to have to plan long term. And as much as I understand that people feel like it's, it might be a detriment to their property values, I come from, um, I lived in Atlanta for a long time where bike paths are as an alternative method of transportation have improved property values. Um, and I just wanted to point that out and thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. We'll close public comments. Um, we will address the commenters one by one uh, through staff. Um, so to, to, I don't think uh, Lewis was asking a question, but rather just stating um, to shift uh, one project to another, to pit one community against another, uh, he's not in agreement with doing. Um, so the next speaker uh, said to, um, they have in their backyard, uh, no access, uh, no, get off the path, go through someone's yards, snakes, cigarettes, uh, crime rate between backyards. So can you speak to uh, whomever, Mr. Landon or um, Carl, to what the strategy was um, uh, and thought process on making their way through backyards to get to the school? I, I think they um, stated correctly the there are three access points to this path, you know, Fellowship, Old Kings Road, and, and uh, Forest Grove. Um, you know, that's the, but the same is basically true with uh, if you Old Kings Road, um, you're going to have a couple of other streets that uh, come out to Old Kings Road. Um, that's going you to know, as far to. as 
paths and, and snakes and those, uh, every path we have out there, you know, Lehigh Trail, Grand Swamp, uh, Linear Park, you know, your same, same, uh, same conditions kind of, kind of situation. Um, next speaker um, really spoke about uh, the cost for a military PSP, a temporary, um, two things, and then all of Old Kings Road will be ripped up during the widening. Cause, so can you address if any thought has been put to a temporary uh, military PSP, um, if staff has investigated that route as a temporary measure, and also when the Old Kings Road widening does occur, that all of Old Kings Road will be ripped up and closed completely. Yeah, I'll start with the other one, let Carl address the, the alternative. Uh, uh, yes, it, it, you know, the best example of Old Kings Road widening is going to be Beltair North widening. Anybody that uh, saw that, it's the same concept. Uh, the, you know, we're not talking about just adding a couple of lanes. You're talking about mm, taking a street that uh, will go away and a whole new one will be in, included uh, with our typical Palm Coast design of the medians. It will have curb and gutter sidewalks. Uh, that means underground drainage, a lot of un underground work, a lot of utility work. So uh, what you see out there today will all be ripped out and started over. And as far as the temporary the yeah, alternative product that was mentioned, I'm not familiar with that product. You know, our biggest concern would be, and even if it's temporary, we still have to be ADA compliant. So that's something we'd have to look into, but it's definitely something we can look at and see if it is a viable option. Um, so I'm, I'll try to take this as uh, they were coming in. Um, so the next speaker spoke about um, seeing kids during track. I'm, I'm assuming that's cross-country track as my nephew uh, was on the cross-country team at Matanzas and, and trained um, back there as one of the spots. Um, buses to take schools. I mean, obviously that's a school directive. We are not under the purview or jurisdiction of the, um, our school district. I do know that state laws apply to how many miles of close proximity to schools. Uh, when I was raising my children here, we lived over in the B section and they rode, rode their bikes to Indian Trails every day. There was no st school buses that were supplied uh, because we were within that two mile, two mile area. Um, so that would really be a decision if there was a change in directing through the school district and Correct. the school board. Correct. So that's, that's not even something uh, jurisdictionally that we have control over. Um, it, the next speaker about, again, sort of the Sesame um, uh, permanent uh, project uh, and having more of a permanent high school uh, solution. Um, uh, the drainage issue um, and the safety of children um, back there, you know, again, I go, I guess, I, I know, um, Commander Carmen had commented about uh, safety on our trails and parks. Um, I, I guess I just also have a question. Um, because the comments uh, really did state about how many other trails or paths go through uh, neighborhoods in Palm Coast. Um, do you know of any, and if so, where? Well, um, most of our paths uh, that run along streets are also behind people's backyards. and. This was different because you don't have a, a street there. Um, as far as one that's similar to this, probably um, the one that I know of that I've used is uh, Grand Swamp. Uh, there is a section there that, that runs behind people's houses uh, in the woodlands um, that is, you know, does, doesn't have, isn't along a, a street and is kind of in a natural area. Um, uh, you know, it's, I can't uh, think of any others. Carl, can you? There's a, uh, from Waterfront Park, from North Park Road over to Grand Haven, there's a, the Shell Trail there that has homes along it as well. Yep. Um, is there a private property, uh, not private property, but is there a restricted sign back there that says well, it's a private At the time property? we did this, yes. The residents requested that we put something up there that says this is... Um, uh, not, you know, wasn't intended to be a path that they're supposed to be using. So um, I do think there's some kind of signage. I haven't seen it for some time. Um, it's one of those unenforceable things. People using the path, I mean, 
you know, maybe not kids going to school, but people walking their dogs, uh, the like. Uh, we're not enforcing as far as you can't be on the public property back there. Well, and it would seem to me, obviously, if the, pay, the path was paved, dirt bikes and those kind of things. Uh, uh, motor, motorized vehicles would, would not be allowed. Uh, I will tell you that um, the motorized. Again, we're not doing this. The motorized vehicles uh, using the FPNL access road. I mean, they have kind of a road back there that, that accesses their power lines. Um, that would be, you know, once again, it would be law enforcement, uh, difficult to enforce, but they should not be back there. Um, so students that are accessing this, I'm, I'm assuming when the students first came and created this um, proposal about lighting, safety, and education, sort of a th three-prong approach, um, when they addressed this path, was it because um, they knew of students utilizing the path to get to school? My conversation, I would say that not. Their, their focus and the conversation I had with them was that we needed to spend more dollars on, and they got our budget out. I was rather impressed uh, on uh, safety to school. And uh, then that's when we had conversations about some options as to how do you get to school. Um, and it wasn't just around Matanzas. They were talking about other other areas, too. Their whole focus was, uh, in general, uh, safety, uh, both paths and, and lighting. Okay. Um, and, and again, I mean, we can talk about snakes and wildlife back there, but as you indicated, there are every single one of our paths. Um, I mean, I know I, I'm back at Linear Park probably four days a week, and there are snakes everywhere back there. Mm -hmm. It is very remote, uh, so you, you sort of know that going in, but um, it's, it's heavily utilized uh, by a lot of our residents and as all of our paths are. Um, so FPNL goes back there now and it's, their mowing takes place, is that their maintenance? I, I believe so, they usually do that. I think that makes... Okay, so the, the path now um, that currently is being proposed with the easement, so it would be in conjunction with FPNL to maintain? Well, they would still maintain their, their uh, vehicle portion. access. Uh, this path is not on that access, so it would be two separate maintenance issues. So no way to police it. To, uh, can you address how if a path was put back there, there would be absolutely no access or to, to way to police it? I'm going to have to, I mean, it's like any of our other paths. If there's a problem, then uh, the sheriff's office actually has, uh, it, I'm going to call it a scooter. It's probably not the right term, but uh, uh, that they ride our paths periodically when we have an area that's a problem. And I don't know why they wouldn't do that with this one. Um, but Mr. Carmen can enlighten us. Mayor, members of Councilman Slim. Yeah, when we had problems in the past, we have used bike patrols out there. We used bike patrols. Um, although we're not allowed motor vehicles out there, and I know it, I know it does happen, we will uh, make an exception, and sometimes we will have our motor units ride back there because it is, uh, it's a lot quicker and it's a lot safer than an a, a f expedient and then a bike and out there So if we want to catch them. So we do make an exception for motor scooters, uh, motorized units with our motor units. So that the bicycle patrol at the sheriff's department has you you um, we you have we, a plan that you monitor. Some whenever of we've trails. had problems in the past, or, which have been very rare, to be, to be frank with you, um, we will send out motor units. Uh, we will even uh, in certain areas park patrol cars and have a little bit of a walking presence. So whether or not this there. path is paved, the residents are always welcome to call the sheriff's office if there's problems going on. Uh, along this easement that they should not be occurring. Thank you. Um, and as far as um, uh, the commenter about uh, light safety out here, um, that there is technology available, uh, again, those private lights where timers could be set, 911 calls could be made throughout that technology. Um, Yes. Has, has obviously has that been looked at? I know Carl talked about preliminary ideas, but is there a way to um, uh, 
include that within the technology that will allow for the lights to go on and off during school hours where if it's that early in the morning, uh, darkness, and then there's a, a safety measure of, of dimmers as well as emergency 911. Yes, um, and I've got, you know, the estimates uh, uh, from the, you know, uh, solar LEDs uh, in, in ground uh, from 32,000 all the way up to uh, the type we have here at Central Park, which would be uh, closer to 200,000. Uh, so we haven't gotten any detail, but it's a w wide range of options. You would definitely want it to be on timers. Uh, you don't want the path lit at 1 o'clock in the morning because you don't, don't want people out there. But when school starts at 7 and it doesn't get light until 8, you, you, you want it lit for if kids are, are going to school, you want it lit for that in, in different hours. So uh, we've never lit a path uh, in Palm Coast. So as you've talked about before, there might be some others we need to look at, but we'd be happy to incorporate that in design if that's the, the direction of city council. And I think it does need to include, you know, those kind of things as far as definitely timers. Uh, there, there can be a, uh, the, the, I call it the blue light switch so what, because that's what they usually have like on campuses, et cetera. There's a variety of things we could incorporate. Just a clarification, and those costs are a per mile cost and the overall path is around two miles long, so. Okay, oh, okay, thank you. What was that? I'm sorry. Those those costs that were indicated, the roughly close to 50 grand to the 200 grand, that's per mile. Okay. And the, that PL path, including the segment on Old Kings Road, is around two miles long. 100 to 400. Right, so it would be 100 to 400 to light it all the way to Frontier, if you want to light the section on Old Kings also. Okay. Thanks for clarification. Okay. Um, all right, so let's, uh, I, I guess, um, open it back up to our council uh, to discuss. Um, Vice Mayor Nobile. A couple of points. First, uh, I, I just want to make aware that when I spoke to the uh, Matanzas committee, they were not aware of the FPNL path. Uh, it was introduced to them, and, and rightfully so, as an option. You know, I mean, uh, that's what they came to us for, was to help them with that. But... Uh, just want to make that point. Now, I, you know, somebody asked this question and dropped me like a, I can't believe I didn't think of this, but so all of King's Road path is temporary. I mean, it's, it's all coming down. Yes. Uh, okay, what happens then? Yep. I mean, what happens then? See, this is what I brought up last week. I said, what I would like to see done is I would like to see old King's Road, temporary pavement done, and then before construction, I would like to see us working with the school board to say, look, this is going to be shut down for a period of time. We need you to step up and take care of these kids. They're kids going to school. Now, the bikers, we're just going to tell them, hey, it's closed until further notice, which is fine. I mean, we have to, you know, you have to progress and, and you have to put up with that. Uh, I've been here 35 years. I've been putting up with it for, you know, and, and, but I enjoy it when it's done. So I try to hibernate until it's done. But, you know, so, um, I, you know, I'm, this is, I'm sitting there going, well, we got this, it's temporary. It's all temporary. It's all coming out. So I'm sitting there thinking, we need to devise a plan of quickly and efficiently throwing down a path for these kids to get to school and hope that within, you know, that, and hope that we get the money, you know, three to five years from now, uh, you know, working with the TPO and, and seeing some of the construction that's going on, you know, in, uh, in Volusia County. I mean, it's, I, I, you know, we're going to have to work hard to get dollars from them. Uh, so I'm not, uh, I'm not overly confident in the three-year uh, scenario there. So that's what I would like to see done. Uh, Old Kings were, you know, um, uh, so that's what I said, this is what I wanted get the old king's path down, work with the school board, let's have a long-term plan for, for these kids so that they can get there. Uh, you know, the other thing is now, I mean, this is, we're, so now this $185,000 project could be 285 to 685 it, based on this new lighting process. I mean, it's gonna go up. We gotta have lighting. There has, if you go to the FPL path, have to have to have lighting. Otherwise, the path is, is useless. 
and uh, now you now you're adding lighting and you're intruding on these people's uh, uh, pollution of, of lighting you know so they, they didn't have that in their idea when they bought this um, and but we do have poles along Old Kings Road that FPL we can tell them to put lights up on those poles and light that area temporarily at just the cost of the monthly increase in the cost not a hundred two hundred or three hundred thousand dollars so I'm getting you know the information's flowing that's why I wanted to have this discussion because I really wanted to hear this I don't see any reason as of right now that we can't do this on Old Kings Road and uh, get a temporary path in there quickly and effectively for these kids to start getting to school and uh, when the time comes that Old Kings Road gets torn up then what's going to happen there is we need a, another temporary solution but I think the school board's going to have to help us with that and then when it's done we're going to have a full path up Old Kings Road all the way around to Palm Harbor all the way down to Palm Coast Parkway it's going to be it's going to be great so that's all I have man and next any other questions yes council member and not a question um, I do want to say that um, living right off of Old Kings Road I've never seen any children going up and down that path and I do agree that if we're going to do anything with that path it has to be lighting but keep in mind um, as you walk down that path even if you have lights no one can see you from Old Kings Road. Um, you'd be totally depending on the people that live there to come out and, and be the ones that actually see you. Those, the, it would kind of be like a false sense of security with the lights. The lights may be just to guide you down the path, but it's not going to make you visible to anybody on that path. Um, the, the other thing with Old Kings Road is I think it's important to remember with Old Kings Road is you're going from 35 miles an hour to 50 miles an hour. And that path, people are riding their bikes and it just ends and they're riding their bikes and they have no choice but to get on a, a road that's going 50 miles an hour um, that's one that and it could be children that are on there I see children on Old Kings Road using um, Old Kings Road and taking their bikes off the path getting onto the road and Talking I think that's north, right? um, no going going south if you're going towards the new section we just put oh, in oh, I'm sorry. Um, they're yes. coming safe from Publix yeah, yeah. And they're riding their bikes and the road just ends and they they don't know anything else to do but to get off of there and get onto the road and driving that road it's it's very dangerous when those um, people any bikers children or even the adults get onto Old Kings Road so it, it is a important safety to get Old Kings Road done and I think looking into those um, those military plates um, I just sent Carla just sent you a link to where we can find some of them I think that's a, a, a start, a start at looking at something to get it done and get it done quickly and, and, and you know, as cheap as we can, just get a temporary road in there and, and get something done now. Any other questions? A council member Cuff. I, yeah, I, I, I feel like I have to make a couple of comments here. Um, and certainly if there's an option that we haven't already thought of, I'd like to see that explored but I'd like to see it done quickly. My biggest concerns about extending the Old Kings Road path are the time that it will continue to expose not just the students, but also the rest of the public that rides their bikes and walks <clears throat> to not having a safe path to walk on. The cost is secondary in my mind but it's not inconsiderable I mean to the point that all of the sidewalk on Old Kings Road will be torn out during construction yes I understand that but if we are successful and we vote for one of these options we've looked at today we're basically spending somewhere between 338,000 and uh, 562,000 plus lights on Old Kings Road if we're adding lights to the FPL continuous lighting program and all of that will be torn out hopefully sooner rather than later I mean granted the rest of it that's there already is going to be torn out but that's a sunk cost it's not money we're voting to spend today that's the disadvantage to the Old Kings Road path I, I agree that in the ideal world if we could build it in six months 
fine, we spend the money and we realize it's just money we have to spend for public safety. But when we have an alternative, which is the FPL path, I think we need to give that serious consideration, not because it's cheaper, because in the long run, and I agree, we need some type of lighting in there. I hope it isn't going to be $400,000. I don't think I'd support that. But I do think we need lighting and maybe some other safety features, maybe some cameras, maybe some communication equipment. Although even my wife and I carry our cell phones with us when we walk the dogs and ride our bikes and walk for exercise. And my guess is if you stopped, uh, and I'm not suggesting that Commander Carmen do this, but if you stopped and frisked any high school student that would ever use that path, I'll buy you lunch if they don't have a smartphone on them. So, uh, you know, maybe we could do without some elaborate security system. But I appreciate the objections of the people that live along the path. What I have heard, however, is this, and, and a lot of different reasons for not putting the path up FPL's easement. What it boils down to is not in my backyard. Um, I have heard the safety issues addressed. I've talked to our public safety people about that. I've walked the existing path myself. Um, yeah, I saw a deer. I saw some gopher tortoise. Um, I didn't see any evidence that the path was heavily used by anybody, students or anyone else. But ultimately, the the plea that resonates with me is we like our privacy, we like our peace and quiet, we like it the way it is. And I understand that, and for the people who are objecting to that alternative, I applaud you for your honesty, because to be honest with the public, in my mind, most of the rest of the objections are make weight. They just don't want it in their backyard. I understand that. And if it were my backyard, I bet I'd feel the same way. But I hope that anyone who doesn't get their way in this process appreciates what the city staff and the city council have to go through in making a decision based on what we think is best for all of the residents of Palm Coast, not just high school students going to school. We've had other uh, bike riding fatalities on this road that had nothing to do with young people. And for that matter, the tragedy there earlier this year that has focused attention on this segment of road, I don't think had any, anything to do with a student going to or from Matanzas High School. It was simply a school-age child riding his bicycle in an area where there are no safe sidewalks or paths. So. Um, where I come down on this is unless we can come up with a much quicker, much cheaper alternative that would allow us to put the path up Old Kings Road, I can see no reason not to pursue the FPNL path and complete that. Understand, part of what we'd be building there would have to be torn out as well. And eventually, when Old Kings Road is widened, Probably most of the people will not use this path except for a few recreational bike riders and dog walkers and joggers, but that's okay. We have plenty of other paths in Palm Coast where that's the normal traffic. So uh, my take on this is uh, unless staff tells us they can come back with alternatives other than the alternatives we've reviewed here today that might change my mind, mainly because of the time, but also because of the cost. I think we need to pursue the bike path, the walking path up FPNL with a very quick follow-up to the plans that we have now to provide some type of timed lighting and other safety features that would make it usable for high school students pre-dawn and early evening if you're coming home from school after basketball practice or chess club or you know whatever it is you're doing in the winter because it will be dark but i think we have to include lighting for either of these alternatives so to me it's not a wash i understand hanging a head ahead on an existing pole won't cost as much as designing and building some led or whatever it turns out to be lighting system but again 
at least on the FPL path, it's a cost that we spend and then it allowing for the maintenance. It's a facility for the, for the use of Palm Coast citizens uh, that will stay there regardless of what happens on Old Kings Road, how fast and, and how much we spend out there. So my feeling on this after listening to everybody and I appreciate the comments of the folks that are opposed to this is that the best alternative to get this done and get it done in a timely manner and at the lowest cost, at least for the actual paving, is to continue work on the access easement up Old Kings, up the FPL easement. Thank you. Um, oh, no. I had a, a question. Um, what is the projected cost of the widening of Old Kings Road North? Mm. I believe the lay assessment was right around somewhere between 25 and 30 million dollars. And so, you know, and I know we spoke about this legislatively this last year within our FDOT um, five-year plan that they have certain projects that we have plugged in that that's why this is not recognized on the list because oftentimes FDOT prefers the lower cost projects uh, to get them done rather than this mammoth project. Um, and it just reminds me of what occurred uh, of 15 years of work with the Matanzas Woods interchange. Um, that literally took the county 15 years to get the funding for that. Uh, and it, it really became an issue of safety and public safety and uh, a, a second um, means to uh, secondary evacuation route for our residents at this portion of our community. Um, so it's, it's not as easy as one would think to get $30 million from the state of Florida. They just went through the beach restoration project and um, you can see that was a battle uh, that uh, they came out with um, uh, splitting between St. John's and Flagler County. So that concerns me and so when people are asking why are we sitting here 10 years later without uh, funding options. The funding options are, are challenging um, and I know our vice mayor serves as a representative of this council on the TPO um, and I know Volusia County holds a lot more seats in Flagler County which is unfortunate because it's based on um, population so um, that will be an uphill battle moving forward but this council has indicated that this next legislative session, we want to make sure that we are fighting for these dollars um, aggressively. That's not to say, uh, you know, we, we'd get the appropriation. The government, uh, you know, the governor has a, a big veto pen that he often utilizes for uh, earmarks and appropriations. So, um, you know, that, that's sort of my struggle with this entire conversation. Um, I happen to think our, tr our, our paths and our trails are a, a sense of pride in our city. We have over 125 miles of connected trails and paths that uh, really have provided a great quality of life and an advantage for safety components within our community. Um, I, I, I think probably four days a week I'm on one of our paths and they're heavily utilized and, and they are safe and they're monitored and um, uh, the, the darkness does occur. I've been out at a waterfront park myself when the lights start going down and you have a sense of that fear of, oh my gosh, it's, it's dark and I'm in the middle of nowhere and I have to get home quickly. So um, we want to make sure that we're providing safety uh, to, our, to our residents, but in particular our school students. Not every child is going to be able to afford a vehicle. And the fact of the matter is, even if they are of age, um, you know, uh, I'll use my daughter as an example, and I'm sure she'll love the fact that I'm talking about her. But um, the fact of the matter is, you know, uh, every, she worked uh, in, in, in school, and uh, our agreement was uh, if, if you want a car, uh, I'll match dollar for dollar every money you save to buy a car. And that's what, what, that's what she did. But it took her a long period of time. So um, not every child is going to have access to that. Uh, and, and so we do have to provide a measure of uh, walkability, uh, cycling uh, in a safe environment to get to these kids 
access to uh, school every day. And that's not going to change and it's not going to go away. So um, I, like Bob, um, you know, oftentimes uh, government uh, can be very uh, reactive rather than proactive. And I, I think the great thing about our our plan, our long-term strategy of our street maintenance as well as our um, uh, long-term view of bike paths has always been um, A, let's look at cost, let's look at location, let's look at connectivity, um, but first and foremost we have always looked at uh, school access. So this has been unfortunate that this has taken this many years to get to this point, um, but I, 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 I will say I uh, I, I take offense if it's put upon this council who was not here in 2008 to have that discussion. And I don't know what the outcome would have been if five of us were sitting up here, but we can't rewrite history. So we are where we are today, and we have to make this decision, understanding that we have everything in front of us as far as options. I'm very cautious to see these uh, white view uh, projected costs as every project that I have seen um, as I've served as mayor since coming in in November, the costs have been increased significantly for infrastructure dollars because that's because we're growing again and the cost of material has gone up at least by 20 percent. So those, those costs are very much out of date and I'm not sure how similar that's a realistic figure. Uh, we've I've been surprised about how much higher our costs are, as well as labor and, and everything else. So, um, and as far as using our guys, you know, we are, we are a, a, a tight uh, city as far as our staffing levels go. I know we just had the opening of Holland Park and I was speaking to one of our public works guys and they're now maintaining also the interchange and the landscaping and everything else. And, now we have a significant larger park that they're going to have to go maintain, medians, grassways, everything else. So um, we're going to have to make some tough decisions as far as uh, those types of increased staffing levels in the future. Um, but right now I just don't see us taking part of our, our current um, plan and, and saying, okay, we're not going to do this because now this takes uh, precedent because the Sesame uh, plan came in a very reactionary way, and uh, as well as Seminole Woods. So, um, if, if staff, uh, you know, with, wants to look into those temporary um, PCPs, I've never heard of those before. Um, that would, uh, I would certainly not be opposed to it. But um, I, I'm not in favor of uh, prolonging this um, month to month and keep kicking the can down the road. We have to make a decision and it has to be one that's expedited. So um, with those comments, you know, I will, I will look to our, my colleagues on this council um, for any further comments, but I'm uh, certainly uh, at this point w without other information in front of me, um, actually uh, in keeping with staff's recommendations to move forward with the FPL path. I do have a comment. I just want to say that being in District 2 um, and campaigning out there, I've never had a person say to me, my kid needs that FPNL path because they need to get to school and that's the way they go and we need that path done. Um, I have heard people say, I ride my bike and I get off on Old Kings Road and I'm on the main street with the cars. So out of the two that I've heard, I haven't heard um, about the children on on the FPNL path. I've just heard about Old Kings Road not being safe. And, and I think we're absolutely all in agreement with that too. Yeah. Any other comments? Um, so council, uh, obviously on the agenda today um, would be uh, reconsideration or of um, a former approved approval of contracting with a, a contractor to begin uh, laying the path down the FPL path um, with the connector link. So uh, a motion would be um, to, um, well, many different motions. We could say the motion could be on the table to, uh, yes, we want to, um, let me get the exact words. 
uh, we want to reconsider of the paving path through the F section via the F, P, and L easement. That would give staff directed to say, uh, we're, we're reconsidering this, so please take this contract off the table today. Um, it would have to be in keeping with, um, because we don't have any figures or time frames, we could not make a motion saying uh, we're giving you know, staff now the directive to say we're just doing the old King's path because we have nothing in front of us to approve um, today on this. So it would really just be if uh, reconsideration of moving forward is on the table today, but nothing else. So if that's uh, the will of this council, then I would need a motion for that fact. Could, could we do that? But it would say that we are holding that money until we give Carl extra time to look into... Um, a different way of doing Old Kings Road. I mean, I don't want to take that money and just say, here, you can have it to do something else because that might be our only option. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, it, you're, the, the motion could be, um, you know, um, to moving for, to reconsider the paving of the path through the F section um, with the um, condition that the 185721 that would go to the contract of the bid uh, would be uh, earmarked uh, for a, a future uh, decision by this council to find an alternative method uh, for utilizing those dollars. And so they would, they would come back with the recommendation of saying, if this is the direction we're not going to go into, but this council feels they want to go in a different direction, um, and it would be an alternative to look at these other uh, temporary um, military type things. Um, it, that would be something that we would have to clearly advise our staff in which direction we want to go in. So, but, but the motion today would just be for reconsideration, but it could be holding those dollars for future discussions on an alternative. Is that, that's And what the priorities are um, once again we've already got we're already working towards uh, those projects so what we would do is take this project and present to you kind of where it all fits in and how that would uh, could work uh, yes um, you know you have as far as the dollars uh, that is part of the paving contract 185 um, you'd have two options today one of them we could add streets to that uh, or not do that and use it for uh, a portion of the PATH project. Your choice. So I'd like to make an attempt at a motion. I move that uh, we reconsider this and we give staff time to come up with more detailed uh, alternatives, look at more, alterna or look at more alternatives, give us the full layout, not to exceed the next workshop and the following business meeting. So we don't want it to go, I, I'm making the motion, I don't want to just put this out and say, okay, six months from now, we'll talk about it again. I, we've got two weeks where we're not meeting, then we, have a, then we have our workshop. I'd like to have that presentation at that workshop and then have the vote, final vote, hopefully, the, the week after, and that, that would be as the, f the furthest we will <clears throat> extend this. I know it's putting a little pressure on... Uh, right. I, uh, uh, Chris, the capital improvement program is being presented to City Council. I know not at the next workshop, because that's general fund. Would it be the following one? So will it be, will it been I, I would, hopefully done? Yeah, I, I would recommend that we plug it into that discussion. Oh, okay. Uh, which won't be the next workshop, but I think the one... The one, one further yeah, workshop. As, okay. Uh, as quickly as possible, because yes. you need to see the full picture. Exactly. Uh, and not just this one project if right. you're going to do that. Because there's and, a lot of costs in here that, we, that we're not seeing, uh, and uh, there are a lot of options we're not seeing. You know, so, I mean, I didn't know. I, when I was thinking lighting, I was thinking, all right, that'll round it out at about 200000 But then I'm like, okay, that's not going to happen. It's about 100000 And uh, so, so everything changes. I just like a little more detail. That's all. But not, I don't want to sit around for six months on no, our hands. No, it's, and, it, we need to plug it into the... Uh, five-year capital. I don't know if I got a motion out of that. Well, let me ask, because the lighting portion of it, I mean, it, I've heard um, 
I haven't heard a big, no, we're not doing this path, that's it, but I haven't heard the lighting portion of it, what even that would cost with the, I, if the technology available with, um, I don't know, uh, no. Yeah, the, the timers, the emergency. Well, I'm not, I'm yeah, not and I'm not. With those, I don't even know what that, cost, yeah, right, I have right. no idea. And I'm not concerned with the electrical usage, but, the, you know, because, again, I'm, 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 I'm assuming the lights we would put up on Old King's Road would just be like call FPL, they put it up and we just start the monthly payment. No, it, it's going to be a continuous lighting uh, where we'd have to design it. Just like we did with uh, Lakeview and, and Beltair, we would we would first design it and then they would install them. So okay, but they would. They, that's what I'm have, saying. The we'd difference have some would be design costs. We cost would pay up for front. the design costs, but we'd pay for the design costs on the path also. Right, it, but it's it, a little different because it's foot, the, the, foot right. traffic versus right uh, uh, auto motor vehicle. Right. FPNL is not just going to put up lights on a major thoroughfare we talked about before. Right, it's just for, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, see, those are the things I need before I can make a... So as long as I don't have to repeat everything he just said, I'll second his motion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you restate the All right, the I'll motion? yes, I'll, I'll bring it all into one. So, um... I move that we, uh... Reconsider the uh, FPL easement path. Have staff uh, look at more options, uh, give us more detail in the current options and along with the FPL path with uh, a presentation not to go beyond July. Does that sound good? July. We do the second uh, workshop in July. And with then the, uh, third. the yeah. capital improvement program. Okay. Good. <clears throat> okay. Sound good? Okay. I'm just, I, yeah, I'm trying to write Yeah, we, you, you and me both. Okay. Um, so, and just because I want very clear directive for what staff is hearing out of that motion. So what are you hearing? I, I'm hearing we will not do the FP&L path and that we will uh, move forward with a new project along a uh, temporary path along Old Kings Road and bring that to City Council for your consideration. That's not what I With understand. more detail. No, we're still looking at both. Oh, okay. See, we don't have the details to make. You see, we, we've, got a, we've got a white view. But, oh, absolutely, I, I agree with that. But I thought the motion was that we aren't going to do FP&L. Reconsider. It was to reconsider. What, should what we're doing I, I today, we only we want anyways. more detail of oh, the whole. So, so, so both options will be brought back to you. All, every, so exactly what you brought us today, with hopefully with more options and more detail as to what, okay. you know, the costs instead of just, because like the mayor said, if we're talking 500000 here, but really in, it's seven fifty. that's a big, that's going to make a big yeah. uh, because we're looking, because really, I, I guess what Carl did, but and he had no choice in the time frame, uh, was to look at Whiteview and say, okay, this is what it cost us then. Let's, but I'd like to look at a little more detail okay. in, into this, into these. Uh, all right. So uh, the reconsideration, uh, then what we will do, we need to move forward with the resurfacing um, yeah. contract because. Uh, they're not going to hold those prices and hold that contract uh, this long. So what we'll do is is um, do it as an alternate, or we'll do something with the scope of services not to have them do the FP&L portion of it. It will take them uh, weeks, if not months, to complete all the streets, and then they can right. come back and yeah, do this in, in the meantime. So we're not dropping the FP&L eas easement path at this time. Is that what I'm hearing? Correct. It, with this motion? Yes. And, okay. And, and, and then just bring more detail for, for all the options. Have to get it read. And, and, okay. and, for, and for the um, commenter, um, uh, Stephanie, if you have certain information about certain technology that's available for safety measures, can you send that, like, in an email just so we understand uh, more can, detail? Carl can chat with her. To, yeah. Okay, because I'm not – I don't – I'm not the technology we, person. <laughs> we, we have some other information uh, from Verizon and some other vendors out there that's uh, 
working on these type of projects that we're, we're actually talking about the, the easement path. Yeah. Uh, lighting in general. Oh, lighting Just, general. Yeah, there's there's uh, people knocking on our door. L LEDs are <clears throat> popular nowadays, and so there's a there's quite a, a, a number of people knocking on our doors about how they can convert our lights and do some more smart lighting options for us. Okay, so. Can I, uh, yes. do I have a chance to comment? So, okay, so yeah. wait, there's a first and a second, and then now we'll, now for discussion. discussion. Yeah. Yes. Um, I just wanted to make sure that in understanding or clarifying the motion that the second still stands. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. For discussion, may I comment? Yes. Perfect. Okay, <clears throat> so my question is, when the Old Kings uh, project moves forward, I think the question of when is more pertinent than if. Um, when that sidewalk has to be torn up, what options do we have to install uh, a sidewalk besides going up the FPNL easement? Do we have uh, some type of idea on what we're going to try to propose in the future when that occurs, whether it be five or ten years out? Are we inevitably going to have to create a sidewalk that's going to go up the easement anyway? Yeah. Well, there's no, the, the reason is there's no access to the easement once that construction is going up. Of South Florida Park. Now that will bring uh, my uh, guess again is that it will bring more of that invasion through properties to get to the easement if it's if it's pa if it's paved. Uh, but uh, I, I don't see personally when we do this um, when we do this construction. I, and again, uh, my only only solution I could come up with. At, for these students at that period is that the school board waive the the two mile and budget for see because it's not it's it's not law they, they they it's not that they can't pick up kids within two miles they don't have to and uh, but if if we're looking at it today and five years from now it happens if we start working with them today hopefully they can get to the point say, okay when that occurs we can get buses in there and get those kids to school without uh, totally avoiding uh, Oak Kings Road. But that's, you know what I mean? But that's the idea is that when that's done, there's no other access to the uh, path. Gotcha. And what would be great is if those Marston maths, the PSP maths, if we use them on this and then we can take them, throw them down the FPNL path for temporary use while we're doing Oak Kings Road. But again, you can't get there from here. We, we'll, uh, Still temporary mats we yeah. have. If, if I could help a little bit, uh, we'll also look into temporary measures that contractors do to try to maintain paths during a major construction. We'll also give you the option of doing both, you know, the overlay of the, of the FPNL path, but us also working towards a temporary path along Old Kings Road. If you give us enough time, and I think we'll have it now another month, that we can. Uh, start putting all those things together yeah, for I think you. That's important. Uh, and then you start getting into okay, when it, Old Kings Road is, is tor torn up, you still have yeah. this other option. And we need a plan for that. And, and then the, the whole the whole thing put together. If you want us to do that, could we also ask that the students who are involved in the project for planning the sidewalks and streetlights actually try to poll some of their constituents on seeing who actually uses this path? I've jogged down this path, but I understand that's with Alex's cross-country team, so I may have had the mindset that this is more heavily trafficked than it actually is, but I was also told that people do use that path at 6.45 in the morning. And I just want to ensure that we're all being, uh, we have the right information in front of us. Maybe they are walking there, maybe they're not. But if we could have some type of clarity uh, into that situation, I think that would help everybody. Because if they're not, then I think that changes circumstances greatly. But I've been told that kids do use this, but also I know the cross-country team utilizes it. So perhaps half of that statement's true. I would like to mm -hmm. clarification. Yeah, we we can try. It, it, summertime is difficult yeah. to yeah. Uh, engage uh, the, the students, um, and you're going to want it before that. Uh, they did some surveys uh, when they were working on this little project, uh, so we'll contact them. Jose, you can get a hold of them through the assistant principal and see what he's been their main main contact. And and. I, uh, you know, to that point, I do think it's important that we recognize that, you know, this was a great um, discussion with our students, right? They, they, they got to see actually our process and how it works. And hopefully the residents got to see our process and how this works, that it's not that easy. 
just to go lay a path somewhere. Um, we are, we have a lot of restrictions in front of us on what we can do, what we can't do. Um, and so taking a more comprehensive look and saying, this is this, this is this, this is this, um, really gives us an overall picture. And I mean, I can tell you nothing frustrating, more frustrating than seeing a, a, a necessary widening of a road right in our community and us being um, pitted against Volusia County, you know, if you will. It's, it's uh, $30 million is not going to be an easy one to, to overcome. So um, that, that's going to be important in the future as well that we have those discussions legislatively. So any other questions or comments? Yeah, Mayor, yeah. Uh, one of both, if I may. The question is, I think you alluded to it, Mr. Landon, um, if this motion passes, what does that do to the time frame for the old Kings, uh, to, for the FPL path? And we you talked about slipping it basically to the end of the repaving contract. Right. We'll, we'll make sure that they don't um, get started on the FPNL path, uh, but we won't totally uh, delete it from their scope of uh, streets projects uh, until you make a final decision okay. so um, and I'm I, historically it's a couple of months isn't that what it takes to do the resurfacing and we haven't signed the contract so they haven't mobilized yet so I think we have time well the key to it is they I, won't mobilize twice for the same well same I, cost so we, we'll yeah. and what we can do that's another good question is uh, get their time frame as to uh, when they think they'll be done with all the streets and then we'll have to have a decision to them prior to that time. Yeah. Is, that, is that fair? Yeah, it, ju it just accelerates our upfront work before they come in because by delaying it until the end of July, it really gives us a real small window to do the preparation work before they can come in before their contract expires. So it makes it really, really tight. If not, it may extend their contract. We have to discuss that with them. Okay, well, that's, so, and that's really my question. I, I don't want to vote for a motion to delay this further even if it's only a month if the net result of that is we're going to be in another contract year and delay you know process. 12 months if if the ultimate decision is the FPL path because you know a big appeal of that alternative to me is the speed with which it can be completed good good, good point um yeah. Carl do you recall the uh how many days they have to complete the resurfacing? I, I do not recall. Okay. Um, I'm confident that if we can make the decision first part of August, uh, that w which would be the business meeting, we could also be gearing, gearing up. I don't know. It's, Carl makes a good point, too, that it really puts us in a real narrow time frame to get this thing done. But. Uh, uh, it's up to you if, you know, if, if you make the motion, we'll, we're going to work hard to make that happen. Or if you pass the motion. Okay. Well, yeah, because uh, as you stated, we are in summer, so school is, you know, uh, not in operation. But in the fall, our, our school kids will be back and, and uh, you know, we really do need to make a tough decision. And this is not an easy decision. This is not one that any of us take lightly. We take it very seriously, well, so. Yeah. And then just a final observation, I think the other council members that have talked about what happens down the road when Old King's Road is widened is certainly something we need to keep in mind. But in terms of the decision we have to make about either an Old King's Road extension of the path or the FPL path, to me it's six of one, half dozen of the other. Um, it's going to have to be torn out there will be access problems to the FPL path if that's what's built, but there's going to be access problems all along Old Kings Road, so I don't see that, particularly given the uncertainty of when that's going to happen, as something that influences my decision a whole lot one way or the other. Um, but I do think we need to work with the school board, and not just on this issue, on this issue, but not just on this stretch of, of pathway. So that's. Can I make one more Yes, comment? absolutely. Yeah. Working with the school board, I think, is something that we definitely should be doing. But during the campaign, I talked to a lot of bus drivers because that was a really good feel on how our community was growing. Mm -hmm. 
And I know a lot of these buses are at capacity, and if we talk about picking up kids within the two-mile radius of the school, we're going to have to talk about additional buses and additional, uh, whether it's dropping kids off and staging them. I just know that it will be difficult to deal with the school board if we're trying to ask them to come up with funds when they're already a bit pressed for money as it is. That's just my observation. I could be completely wrong, but... Well, there's more options than just buying buses. There's school hours. If you adjust the school hours, then the buses can, which they do regularly, you know, you adjust the hours and then the buses have different routes. So the same number of buses can be used and reused. So you pick up these kids, take them to this school, then an hour later you pick up these kids and take them to that. So, they, but, you're, but it's money. It, either way it costs money. And that's why we need to be talking to them now and not wait for the road to be torn up and say, hey, can you, uh, you know, work this out? So, yeah, it's a budgetary inch issue, but again, uh, I think somebody made the point very, what are we talking about here? Are we talking about the safety of the kids or are we talking about, you know, some dollars? And, and uh, you know, it's, it, it's you know, it, it, we need some, if, if the school board needs to make some sacrifice for the safety of the kids, because we're getting them to the school, you know, we, we are going to try and do our part here. And we just need a little help, you know, at, at times when, like, we have construction, that kind of stuff. So, but we need to engage them. Oh, and I think the um, desks that we were referring to, unfortunately, did not take place with students walking to school. It was uh, during different hours. So um, it's about just safety on our roadways. Exactly. So yeah. that's, that's a, that needs to be a big distinction. This just happens to be in close proximity to our, our, one of our high schools. So, yeah, um, yeah it's a lot. But, but I, I mean, I, I, again, going back to it, uh, cost does need to be considered as far as options. We, okay. we, we, we must because um, we're going to have to we're going to have to take another project off the list that's on a list currently if we come up with another decision point. So. We always have to be mindful uh, when we're, we're going through this process of that. Um, and it certainly applies to, to my thought process. But um, All right, so a motion seconded. We've had discussion. Is there any further discussion by council members or questions or clarification needed? Either by council or staff? Okay. Um, okay, M moved and seconded. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Okay. Um, can we do a roll call vote, please? Vice Mayor Nobile? Yes. Councilmember Cuff? No. Councilmember Clufus? Negative. Councilmember Shipley? Yes. Mayor Holland? No. Mayor, the motion fails two to three. Is there another motion on the table? We, we don't need another motion. Um, it's already passed. If, yeah. um, because the contract, I mean, you've already approved this. So the motion was really to reconsider. Um, and I, I don't think you need a motion to do, to reapprove something you've already approved. No. We would, we would move forward with this. Um, Mayor, if I could offer um, to still take a look at options for a temporary path along Old Kings Road um, to try to address the safety issues unrelated to getting to school or anything, but just the safety issues along Old Kings Road that comes out of this uh, and see if we can put together a, a project and plug it into the um, capital improvement program present that to you into July so it address trying to uh, address both issues well and also uh, lighting pre, you know part, yes. part of that and, and, and lighting, lighting too. has okay. to be part of that all right so I, and just hearing the comments try to still address some of the, the comments even even though we move forward with the, the service right. so let me ask this may, may I yeah. uh, may I ask this question we we have the contract has been approved right what how how do we get lighting in there 
We, we wouldn't. It, we, we would never. The, this I, is a, I understand. So now you got to come back for the lighting. Yeah, we would have done that to begin with. Uh, I, I understand that. Okay. So, but again, we so we voted on not the full thing, but that's okay. We, we, yeah. we don't know what we're doing, but well, I mean, I didn't mean we, that. I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. Well, well I meant we don't have all, all, all the full information. For lighting is something new that that is. I mean, we're talking about an asphalt company, so this. Yeah. You know, the lighting oh, yeah. is going to be electrical system. And, and but that's so a separate. That's a separate we're going contract to come to us with. Here's the, here's the proposal. We'll, we'll lighting. still come back to you about that, too. Yeah. Madam Mayor, I don't want to beat this to death. I use that term a lot. And I like what I hear the city manager saying. I was considering a motion, even though one wasn't necessary, to continue with the FPL path. But if staff can come back to us with alternatives that sound better um, before those dollars are spent and before that path goes in I certainly for one would like to hear some of the other alternatives not not to waffle on a decision that's already made because I think the previous motion that failed had a lot going for it I'm just not ready to just keep delaying so if, if the staff can do what the previous motion would have required them to do in that time period, I certainly have no problem discussing it at a workshop and, and proposing or approving something different. And, and I thought that's what our motion was doing, was saying, let's just give it a little more time. It's only going to be one, one more meeting. Let's not do this project that people are opposed to if there is another option that actually works to get people off the road. Well, I, I think, th yeah, at this time we've, yeah, we've made the motion. So, um, all right, thank you, Mr. Landon, for your, your comments as well, as well as the council members. Um, okay, we'll now move to the consent agenda portion of our agenda. Um, this is public comment on issues not on the agenda. Uh, you have up to three minutes. Um, if any member wants to speak on either 8, 9, 10, or 11, please do so at this time. Well, 12 also, Mayor, on the next page. I need glasses. Okay. Well, you can come up and speak you on... You say 12. I just okay. said 12. Oh, yes. Okay. No, thank you. And any, okay, we will close um, public comment towards that, and I will entertain a motion to approve consent agenda items 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Move approval. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Seeing none, it passes unanimously. We'll now move to public participation, which allows members of our public to speak up to three minutes on items not on the agenda. Uh, please state your name for the record, and your three minutes will begin following. Thank you, Madam Mayor, Commissioners, uh, City Staff. My name is Jim Troiano, and I bring you goodwill from the St. John's River Water Management District and our Executive Director, Dr. Ann Shortell. I am the new uh, Governmental Coordinator for not only Flagler County and all the municipalities, but for Alachua, Marion, and Putnam Counties also. Um, so uh, Jeff Samples was the coordinator. He's moved to uh, isolate uh, his uh, tasks in the northern part of our district, and um, I've assumed these details of recently. I just want to say that um, I'm real proud, and the district's real proud of two programs that we recently uh, uh, put out. Uh, one was our cost-sharing program, which the city of Palm Coast did very well with. Again, uh, $700,000 award for some weirs here in, in Palm Coast. So we'll be bringing... Uh, a make-believe check here real soon for you all to, to spend that funds to help us with our water issues and to let you know that we do have cost-sharing programs coming up in September uh, for our ready programs which you all are um, able to participate in and then again in March of next year for regular cost share and for our uh, agricultural community we have a 1.5 million dollar grant that's available now uh, up until the end of July for application and I did provide information to city staff on that so I wanted to come by and say hello and uh, what my new duties and responsibilities are for the district um, so is there anything I can take back to Dr. Shortell or to uh, the district uh, from the members of the Commission no thank you though but thank, you. thank you thank you thank you Welcome. very much have a good day thank you thank you next speaker
Lewis McCarthy, Palm Coast. I wish to thank the board and the mayor for uh, recognizing uh, Juneteenth. It's very important for me and members of the uh, African American Cultural Society and ones who are even not members to know that at least they will recognize. And I wish to thank you. Thank you. Next speaker. We'll close public comment. Um, Jim had left already, but uh, Lewis, thank you. It was an honor. Um, and, you know, just a, it's a very moving uh, event. So uh, Palm Coast uh, really was proud to be part of that. So thank you. Okay, we'll now move to discussion by City Council of Matters Not on the Agenda. Council Member Cuff. Um, one, one thing I did want to bring up, and some of our discussions today may play into the timing, but at our last workshop, we were talking about the uh, cable uh, fiber optic sharing agreement that I understand, if it happens, will be brought back before us in late uh, probably in late July, I think they said, in order to meet their time frame. Your, your next workshop. The next workshop, okay. Of July. One, and the only, and we don't need to discuss this now, but a question I had from the last workshop was the um, non-compete feature of that proposed contract. I just, I'd like to make sure, and maybe this is more addressed to Mr. Reichman than to the rest of the staff, but that we have a, a clear explanation of what we're agreeing not to compete with and what they're agreeing not to compete with. And I understand that'll be in the final agreement that's proposed, but before I forget again, um, I wanted to bring it up to staff's attention. Good, yeah. we'll do. Okay. Yep. Okay. Is that all? That's, that's okay. it. Vice Mayor Nobile. Just one thing. Uh, District 4 would like to thank Nestor for the new pads on Rimfire's bike path because now our tires are happy. Thank you. <laughs> That's funny. Is that all? Yes. Thank you. Um, Council Member Clufus. Yes. Uh, my question is in regards to whether or not we have any ordinances for digital television antennas on top of our roofs. Uh, it is possible to pick up a signal from Jacksonville and Orlando with bi-directional antennas. They're not very big, but before I uh, told my coworker that, yeah, you can go ahead and, and do that, I wanted to ensure that, I've, that there aren't any uh, ordinances or regulations against having an antenna on top of our roof, similar size to a satellite dish. Just the height. I think there's, uh, most cities do. I haven't heard it for a long time. Uh, We'll get Ray Tyner, Tyner and his staff to get with you to um, answer questions about, you know, I think there's some zoning people that can help you out with that. Thank you. Yep, that's it. Council Member Shipley? Nothing. So we'll move. Um, City Attorney, do you have anything to bring back? Uh, nothing that I was asked to bring back or pass along, but if you all have anything for me to pass along, I'm happy to do so, and I will make mention to Attorney Reichman just about the non-compete provisions within um, the contract that you mentioned. Thank you. Uh, city uh, Manager of Matters Not on the Agenda. Yes, uh, uh, tonight is Food Truck Tuesday, our very popular uh, little event here on uh, Park Street, Central Park, uh, from 5 to 8. Uh, also, you know, it's 4th of July time. Uh, so need to talk about City Council schedule, as we've talked about before. The fourth this year is on a Tuesday, so obviously uh, we have uh, canceled the July 4th City Council meeting, which means the uh, workshop is also no need for it because it uh, ties into that, that um, uh, business meeting. So uh, you have a 4th of July little holiday here until um, uh, July 11th, which will be your next workshop. Uh, also, uh, you know, we are Fireworks, we do every year. We uh, always uh, don't do it the same night as Flagler Beach. So this year it is July 3rd, right here at Central Park. Uh, there will be a, a number of things you can uh, participate in uh, earlier. It starts at 5 here at Central Park, and then um, fireworks are scheduled to shoot off about 9 p.m. 
Uh, so, uh, and then last thing is, and I need to get the time right, uh, 8 a.m. on Tuesday the 4th is our independent celebration at Heroes Park. So that uh, is the following morning, uh, be Tuesday the 4th at Heroes Park at 8 a.m. Uh, Mayor, that's all I have for, yeah. and other than happy 4th of July. 4th of July. Happy 4th of July. Motion to adjourn.